tenemos que plantearnos una visión. No queremos exclusión de barrio, urbanización, de este, oeste, de blancos, negros, de ricos, pobres, no. Una inclusión de todos los caraqueños hacia el cambio que se merece esta ciudad. Esto no es un tema gobierno-oposición, no. El gobierno, con esta medida, lo que está buscando es sacar del juego quienes están dispuestos a construir una nueva mayoría. Nosotros votamos aquí en Caracas para pasar los problemas. Estamos para solventar los problemas. A la violencia no le respondemos con violencia, pero sí le respondemos con más presencia, sí le respondemos con más redir, como decimos nosotros aquí en Venezuela. El gobierno no le va a permitir bajo ningún concepto que él sea habilitado porque es una de las personas que más miedo le tiene el Estado. No respetan la Constitución. Nosotros somos golpistas Estamos y nosotros, somos, nosotros defendemos la, la democracia en Venezuela. 70% de los Venezuela caraqueños querían que hiciéramos el alcalde. Él está inhabilitado por ladrón, por corrupto. Por malandro, gente que paga. No he sido sometido a ningún proceso judicial porque soy inocente. El gobierno le tiene miedo a Leopoldo. Eso es. Pero si ellos son delincuentes y corruptos, en la cárcel deben estar y no pueden ser candidatos a nada en este país. Nosotros estamos en presencia en Venezuela de un paraestado, una ficción de democracia. Yo he denunciado hoy en el Parlamento Europeo. We won. We won. We're going to charge it. We go to the resolution. Adelante, doctor. Este es el lugar en donde se reúnen los disidentes en Praga. Future president of the Russia, future president of Venezuela. Este es un hecho. Leopoldo López para que sea mayor. No hay nadie que no lo quite. Ni con trampa. Esta victoria no es mía. Hoy, artísticamente, en Venezuela llevamos a cabo una revolución pacífica. Hoy hay dos caminos. Darle vida a la constitución o sentenciar de muerte a la constitución de la República Bolivariana de Venezuela. Sus ojos nos están hablando a Venezuela de que ustedes están inocentemente siendo cómplices de una violación de derechos humanos. Se equivocan quienes creen que con esta decisión nosotros vamos a dejar de construir una nueva mayoría. Porque hoy más que nunca esa mayoría se va a expresar en todos los barrios y en todas las calles de toda Venezuela. Buenas tardes. Muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes. Thank you very much for all of you being here. It has been a wonderful opportunity to share with so many people that are fighting for the same causes in different places of the world, but with so many similarities in Africa, in America, in Asia, or in different places, small or big, or fight is so similar that it surprises even us that have been dedicating our lives to freedom and the defense of human rights. Our country, Venezuela, it's a country with great opportunities. It's a country that 10 years ago had our first export oil at $9 per barrel. Last year, or two years ago, the price of oil was at $150 per barrel. However, our main problem, our main issue to address, which is poverty, it still lies at 57% of the population lives under poverty and 27% live under extreme poverty. That's not only our biggest problem. We also live under fear 
under a country that has become the most violent country in the American continent and one of the most violent countries in the world. Here you can see a comparison between Venezuela, Colombia, Mexico, Brazil, which are countries that are supposed to be violent and the leading countries of insecurity. However, over the past 10 years, Venezuela has become the most violent. There is no justice, but most important, there is no will to overcome this problem that Venezuelans are facing. Venezuelan jails are the most dangerous in the entire world, some say. This is a ratio that compares the prison system, the deaths in the prison system in Argentina, Colombia, Brazil, and Venezuela. And as you can see, if you add up all the people that are killed in the prisons of, Venezuela, of Colombia, Brazil, and Argentina, they're not even close to compare to those that happen in Venezuela. Well, that's part of the diagnosis. All Venezuelans know what is happening. We suffer. We suffer poverty. We suffer inequality. We suffer insecurity. We suffer violence. We suffer division. However, our goal is not to give a diagnosis. Our goal, our mission, our commitment is to present Venezuelans with an alternative, with a hopeful alternative to what is happening to all Venezuelans. Our movement, after I was disqualified to run for office, as the video said, I was mayor for eight years, from the year 2000 to the year 2008. I was reelected in the year 2004. I left office with 92% of the approval rate in my municipality. We had 70% of the vote to go on to the city of Caracas that has six million people and it's the second most important political position in Venezuela after the president. I was disqualified because as mayor, I decided to pay teachers, public lighting, and po um, uh, police officers by a simple administrative decision of using the funds that were available. There is no case. But even if there was a case, there cannot be any disqualification if there is no trial. And if there is no criminal sentence, there can be no disqualification. And that is why we have taken our case to the different realms to defend not only our rights, but the rights of the people to elect. Our case is currently in the Inter-American Court for Human Rights, and we are waiting to see if they, we have a, a positive outcome, which we are sure we will have to continue our fight in Venezuela. Since I was disqualified in the year 2008, uh, November of 2008, I left office in December, and from that moment on, we started a movement, a movement that brings together important forces that are organized and are organizing themselves in Venezuela. Students, union leaders, and most importantly, community leaders that are at the core of our proposal. Voluntad Popular, People's Will, is the name of our movement. We go out to the streets with many others. We protest, and this is a way that, as you saw in other videos of Venezuela, this is the way the government receives those that are protesting. With tear gas, with attacks, and as you can see in this video, with violence promoted by the forces of the government. These are some of the clippings of protests that take place in Venezuela, not only in the capital, but all over Venezuela. These are students protesting, regular citizens protesting, People that go out to the streets to claim for their rights. People that go out to the streets to claim for change. People that go out to the streets using their constitutional right, Article 68 from our Constitution, to manifest peacefully and manifest for change if they wish to do without interfering in the liberty of others. And this is the way the government responds. It responds with violence. It responds with the force of those that know that they no longer have the reason to convince the citizens. We're building a movement from the bottom up. As Mr. Granier said, we no longer have the media as a way to do mass communication in Venezuela. So we have to build up a movement from the bottom up. We're going town by town, barrio by barrio, putting together groups of people, 5, 10, 15, 20, and giving them two things, hope, and tools to become better leaders. Tools that will allow them to overcome the strife in their communities. Tools as simple as leadership skills, 
as organization skills, tools that will allow them to have the self-esteem always high to overcome a government that wants to push the self-esteem of our citizens always to the minimum level so we cannot raise and rise as a unified country. Our movement is based on the Constitution, approved by the current president 11 years ago. Our proposal to Venezuela is simple. All rights for all the people, without exclusion, without privileges. All rights for all the people are there in our Constitution. The right for freedom of expression is in the Constitution. The right for property is in the Constitution. The right for housing, for health care, for social security, for education is in the Constitution. The right of life, the right of being treated equally by the judicial system, it's in the Constitution. So we promote a proposal to unite Venezuelans from the perspective of defending our rights. There are many Venezuelans that have many different reasons to be in the streets, that have many different reasons to want change. Some want change because of freedom of expression. Some want change because of social conditions in health, education, housing. Others want change because of the centralization. And the Constitution gives us the most important, the most democratic tool or position to gather all Venezuelans and want change. But the most important thing is that we are promoting change from the democratic contract, which is the Constitution. Unfortunately, this Constitution for the government is only paper. It's not being taken seriously by the government. It's taken as a cover that is not being respected by the government or any of the powers. Just to give you an idea, Three weeks ago, the president said, that idea of division of powers is an idea of liberal democracy that we need to change. And the day after, the president of the Supreme Court said, yes, we are building a new type of democracy where there is no rule of law or the autonomy of powers. What are we doing? We are incorporating people that have supported the government. We're incorporating students from the student movement that have become one of the most important forces that we have to mobilize in Venezuela and to talk about the future. We have incorporated union leaders that want change from the bottom up, that want to defend the workers' rights, but also want to defend the possibility to have a prosperous Venezuela with investment and with opportunities for all. And we are incorporating especially the poor. Where we work, we work in the poorest sectors of Venezuela where the government supposedly has the monopoly of the hearts of the people, but where we know that the people are most hungry for change and hope. That's where we are gathering, and that's where we are putting together our organization. All over Venezuela, there are places that are still waiting for change. How we organize, simple things, like these programs. This is a program of uh, um, entrepreneur, modern entrepreneurs. We give them simple tools to become entrepreneurs, to become independent from the government, to become independent from a reality that they may, or many women in Venezuela face, single mothers that have no longer the possibility of having the support from their husbands. Programs, we organize the elderly. We organize or networks in the prison. This is one of the many prisons in Venezuela. We work with them, we work with inmates Inmates are part of our movement inside the jail system, inside the prison system, and outside as well. We organize simple things for kids in barrios, like presenting them a movie where they don't have the possibility of going to the cinema. We bring about change. We take a corner that has been abandoned and we make a small park. We take the possibility of a place where there was a trash disposal and we work with the community to bring about change. And there are many of us, many of us that are working together. Last year, on December the 5th, we were able to present to Venezuela after an entire year of working silently, without mass media, without explaining uh, publicly what we were doing, we were able to gather 10,000 people without uh, doing uh, an invitation by the media, without being an electoral process, just the people that are committed with these ideas that I'm sharing with you today. 10,000 people from every corner in Venezuela, we gather to present our movement that is still young, but it's racing at a great speed. We are committed 
to fight a government that does not respect the rights of a people. But the only way, the only way to be successful is to bring together all those that are fighting for their rights. Because there are so many rights, there are so many reasons to fight an authoritarian government that we need to bring together a common point. That common point for us is all the rights for all the people without exclusion and no privileges. Thank you very much. Thank you.